this is how I used to render my tires. I basically took the ground plane and then moved it upwards until it touched the tire and then continued to move it upward until the tire was slightly clipping with the floor. And to be honest, it works quite well. And But today I have a better method that I want to show you and it's as easy if not easier than this. So first you want to select your tire and make sure all the modifiers are applied. Let me just remove that to not spoil the punch of the video. And then using Shift S, wait, let me turn on my uh, my keys over here. Okay, so using Shift S, you want to put the cursor in the middle. If your tire is at the world origin like this one, it's fine. Just do cursor to world origin or whatever works best. I just want you to have the cursor in the middle of the tire. Once this is done, we're going to add a lattice modifier to the tire and then a lattice object. Now you can see that my lattice spawned here because I moved the cursor. So I can just move the cursor to selected and select the lattice and then shift S again, selection to cursor. And now we have our lattice at the right place. Okay, so select the tire with the lattice modifier and then select the target object as the lattice we just added. Scale it on the x-axis in object mode. Make sure to not go in edit mode because if I was to go in edit mode, we could just um, basically scale the tire. Now I just want to scale the lattice object. So in object mode, I will scale the lattice until it fits the tire pretty much like that. Now go to the object data properties. It's like the, the window, the lattice um, icon, if you want in green over here. And we want to add um, the resolution to the lattice so we have a bit more control points. In those two directions, it will be fine. Now, um, we want a lot of horizontal control points, but don't just crank it to that point. It's overkill and you won't need that much. <laughs> okay, so now in edit mode of the lattice object, sorry, do not go in edit mode of the tire. We don't want to touch our tires in a destructive way. Okay, so I will select the bottom row of points of the lattice and then move it upward a tiny bit, just like that. And then do the same for the other rows of vertices. Until I'm happy with the, the flatter end that I can get. Now, you can play with this for quite a long time. Um, I won't, I just wanted to show you how I do them. And the beauty about this is since it's not using, for example, vertex groups or anything, if the tire turns, the deformation will stay there. So it will stay in the direction of the ground. Now you could parent the lattice object to, for example, the brake, since the, the brake caliper doesn't turn with the wheel. So the lattice would always stay in that orientation, but it will follow the wheel when it turns uh, to the left or to the right. Now this method works perfectly fine for tires with chubby um, sidewalls or like very flat uh, treads. Yeah, sorry. Um, for tires with bigger treads, now it becomes a bit more awkward. Like I'm ca I can show it to you. It's not the perfect method, but it should still work fine, you may need to tweak it a tiny bit more. So I'll just do the same thing, add the lattice object to the tire, then scale, it in, scale the lattice in object mode until it fits the tire, just like this. Okay, that's pretty good. Add some resolution to your lattice, just like that. And then go in object mode. And now you can see I may have used a bit too much. So I will press O on the keyboard to turn on proportional editing and then scroll with my mouse to reduce the radius of the proportional editing. And now this can obviously be a great way to make like uh, very um, old tires that just don't have enough air in them anymore or something similar to that. Let me just not clip them to the floor because that's is why I made this video in the first place. 
But yeah, you can see that this one may need a tiny bit more. But it always depends on the type of vehicle you use, the type of tires, obviously. Um, some tires will deform much more than others. And it depends on the situation you want. But this method is very flexible. And this is what you should look for when you're trying to improve your workflow. You want something that will work every time, that's reliable, quick, and easy to implement. Because now I can just copy this tire and then go to my new project. For example, I don't know, uh, this tiny pickup truck. Okay, so um, you can see that this truck doesn't, ha doesn't have any tire at the moment. And I can just paste the tire object over here. And I set my pivot point to bounding box. And then I can parent um, the lattice and the tire together. Uh, because I'm not planning on animating this for now. Because if you were planning on animating this and you were parenting, for example, to the tire or to the lattice, doesn't matter the, the direction of the parent link. Um, and the tire starts spinning, you can see that we have the flat end of the tire on top, on the top side, which doesn't make any sense. It's the gravity and the force of the vehicle that's creating this flat side. So it should always be on the bottom. And that's why I suggested to parent um, the lattice to, for example, the brake, um, because your brake caliper should not spin like this. Okay, so let's just place this real quick uh, using Alt D. I will move the tires at the right place. Just like that. Set my pivot to 3D cursor just so I can mirror them. So Alt D, S, X, minus one. So they're flipped exactly on the right side. Now let's just hide those lattice. And make sure that this is Right place. Now, I could definitely make this better, um, but you can do it much better than me, uh, I'm sure with that. But this is how I use um, the lattice modifier to create non-destructive, um, I don't know, tire bottoming, tire flattening, call it whatever you want. Um, this is how I do it, and it's a damn great method. Now, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.